We're back from the bye week, but it's time for the best show of the week. That is the prediction show with your boy Tristan Spamford. We're diving into homecoming week today. You are locked on Golden Gophers, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Gopher fans? You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name's Kane Rob, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Now, y'all know I missed Tuesday because your boy was dying. I couldn't talk. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't nothing. Thank God for kids. Am I right, Tristan? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But, uh, <laughs> but we're back at it. We're on the men. So if you ever hear, I have someone to cover my tracks now, too. If I need to take a breath or something, <laughs> Tristan can speak up. So, I mean, we're good on that one. This should be a lot smoother of a show than what we had on yesterday's show. But I appreciate y'all for listening, tapping in, following each and every day here at Locked On Golden Gophers. And today we're diving into the Maryland predictions. Now, we're coming off a of bye week. We're coming off two dubs, two L.A. schools. The Gophers took back L.A. It's the curse of the Lakers. Like, y'all took the Lakers. We're taking your schools away from you. So, <laughs> overall, definitely some good trajectory for the Gophers, positive movement for the Gophers. But we have another win that looks like – well, I shouldn't say we have another win. We have another game that <laughs> looks like it could potentially be a win for the Gophers. But I, before we get into Maryland itself, I want to talk about the rest of this season for the Gophers and what your thoughts are. So I'm going to list each game for you, and I want you to tell me one thing that you are uh, nervous about it, and then if you think they're going to win or lose. Now, you can change your guess on those games when we get to the actual prediction weeks themselves, but just a gut check right now with the final games of the season after Maryland. So first one is Illinois. One worry, and then do you think they'll win or lose? No, Illinois just owns us. That that makes me so nervous, and that's going to be, as of right now, gut check, lose. That's a loss. That's a loss. Our next one after that is Rutgers. That's a win. That's uh, next one after that is Penn State. Unbiased. That's a loss. And then we got Wisco. That's that's a dub. That's a dub. Finish out strong. Us in Wisconsin fighting for a, a bowl game. All right. So even with those going two and two there, if they win the Maryland game, that's straight up bowl uh, eligibility. That's straight up seven wins on the season. You know what? Based on how the season started, I would take it, especially, but it would hurt a little bit too. I'm not going to lie to you because knowing you were a kick away from North Carolina, knowing you were that onside away from Michigan, you're talking about, dang, maybe we could have won nine games on this season. So definitely hurts a bit looking at it all, but I would take two and two on those four games. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, and even those two losses would be, I mean, they'd be the ranked opponents at Recorrect, Illinois still ranked mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't be anything necessarily to hang your heads at, hang your heads on. Now, obviously, it would be great to win those, but they're understandable. Now, I'm going to tell you straight up, if you're listening today, by the time we get to the Illinois show next week, I am guaranteeing Tristan is going to be all on board for a dub versus Illinois. So I'm glad I could catch raw Tristan without the GMOs. He's got you straight up right now. But when you see Gopher Van Tristan next weekend, trust he will be back. He will be ready. Bye week has me very level headed. You know, I, I took some time for recovery because it's also recovery time for us. And so I'm going in level headed back to, you know, we're zero, ze we're, we're on zero and zero in the Maryland week. But after this win this week, oh, I'm back, baby. I'm back. He's back. Fully back. Jump <laughs> on in the boat. All right. But of those four games, which game do you want the most? So you got Illinois, Rutgers, Penn State, Wisconsin. Which one do you, if you only could have one win for the rest of the season, which one are you picking? I mean, I think this is a pretty easy consensus for every Gopher fan. Let me and walk it's gonna... back. Wisconsin's too easy of a choice. <laughs> of the three other games on that schedule, which one do you want the most? Honestly, it's easy to say. Obviously, Penn State would be incredible. To ruin Penn State season would be that would be awesome and feel really good. But I think getting over the Illinois hump would be awesome. That would be I think it would mean a lot more as as a fan base, or at least for me, especially considering, you know, oh, I, I don't know how the scheduling works now. We only pay Penn State every other year, stuff like that. I think, I think that Illinois win would be massive, massive, massive. 
Yeah, I'm with you. I like the Illinois one, but just for my gut, I need the Rutgers win. I need the Rutgers yeah, win. Uh, yeah, I keep forgetting that's a Kallik revenge game. Manis, if Ethan Kalik Manis comes back and beats the Gophers, if Kirk Sharaka gives us a wink across the sideline, I, I can't handle it. I can't handle it, man. I need the Gophers to prove it was the right decision. If they get the last laugh, that's going to hurt a little bit. But we're moving on to Maryland week. We're jumping into it full force. Now, Maryland has had a weird season so far. They blew out UConn, which is expected. They lost to Michigan State by three. <clears throat> kind of interesting, but it was close, so it happens. They beat Virginia. Sure, you expect it. They whooped Villanova. Yep, you expect it. But then they got smashed by Indiana. Now, at the time, you're like, eh, that's kind of weird. But Indiana's been smacking folks mm -hmm. left and right. Now it makes sense. But then you go to the next game, smashed by Northwestern. And I was like, 37 to 10. Like, it wasn't even close. What happened? And so I was like, okay, Maryland sucks. It's just, that's what it is. Maryland sucks. Then they come back out the next week, and they beat USC. I'm like, what is going on with this team? So right now, when I look at this team, it feels a lot like Minnesota and Maryland have been on similar playing fields, playing big against big teams, playing weird against teams they should be beating. How are you feeling about this Maryland team? Yeah, that's exactly how I was feeling when I was kind of looking over it because, first of all, Maryland might be the least televised Big Ten team ever. Like, I I feel like I've watched – I went from when Tua's brother was there, I feel like it was every week you'd see Maryland playing at some point. It felt like they were just on all day. And then this year I just feel like I haven't seen them on TV at all. I haven't watched anything. But, yeah, looking at the numbers, it's it's like the highest highs and the lowest lows. It's, it's super similar to what the Gophers are kind of going through this year. Um yeah, I just I can't I can't get a beat on them. Like especially with what you're talking about with Indiana, like you'd expect that to be a win for them and Indiana, but Indiana's just rolling people. So rolling. And, but they I I just can't I can't tell and then you look at USC and you kind of have to look back like okay, if Maryland beat them is are they that good? But you right. want that win because it make it's a good win for us. I I'm, I'm I have no clue. I cannot get a beat on them. Right now, you're starting to question: Was the USC even a good winner? They just exactly. Like, what exactly. Happened? And then on top of that, uh, two things I wanted to give a shout out on what you said. The first one being, yes, Maryland feels like they are just never on TV, which is crazy because their quarterback is number one in passing yards in the entire Big Ten conference. I would never, if you, if I wasn't in this podcasting, if I didn't look at the Big Ten constantly, and you were like, oh, who's leading the Big Ten? I probably would have been like, oh, Dylan Gabriel or like Penn State quarterback Drew Allert. No. It's Billy Edwards Jr. from Maryland. Like all-time football crazy. name. All-time football all name. I love that. Man. I love that. <laughs> Good old Billy Edwards. But uh, so aside from that, the third shot I had to give, look, Kurt Signetti, coach of Indiana. Yeah. The man came out here. He came out hot. He came out firing the presses in the comp media day. He was like, look, Google me. Google me. I win. Google me. <laughs> You know what I'm doing. winning like seven and oh this dude is the first team to have bowl eligibility in the entire country like mad props to kurt signetti calling his own shot it's crazy yeah actually they're and their schedule is going to get harder but it's it's like you you want to you want to have that okay they haven't played anyone they haven't played anyone but then you look at the way they're beating these teams and it's like they they might just got a squad you play you can't you can't pick who you play you play right. whoever's in front of you and to be honest, I think Nebraska is pretty decent, especially their defense, and they just cooked them, just yes. cooked them. So yeah, I'm kind of a believer. I'm like, okay, maybe this is real deal. Yeah. I'm, I'm now, if they come out, and, if they come out and beat Ohio State later this year, look, I'm on the hype train. Let them win the whole dang thing. Yep. Like, go Indiana. I'm with you. Rep Big Ten. Like, we'll see what happens. Also, Kurt Signetti would probably be out that out that <laughs> baby in two seconds <laughs> yeah his phone would be ringing left and right this offseason you know he's already fighting off job offers <laughs> <laughs> exactly all right <clears throat> so when we're talking about this maryland game are there any worries with it being homecoming last year we beat louisiana we kind of got the homecoming monkey off our back but the two prior to that were losses to purdue and then losses to bowling green we don't talk about and it so, we don't talk about that um, we don't both of those 
both of those losses for homecoming were the difference between a 9-1 season and winning double digits. If we would have won double digits for three different years, like PJ probably would have a statue. I'm not even going to run. Like, what a run. It would have been nuts. So <laughs> the fact that we dropped those homecoming games always cuts a little bit deeper for me. I was even a little bit nervous for Louisiana last year. It was a little closer in the beginning, but they pulled away. But now you've got a quality team, a team that can pass the ball in Maryland. Are you a little nervous that it's homecoming week and the Gophers seem to be a little distracted with homecomings usually? The homecoming isn't – I think we got homecoming on a good spot. I'm sorry. My dog is just attacking no, me right good. now. Um, we enjoy pups here at Lock 9 and go. <laughs> Pet friendly. But um, I, I I think we got homecoming at a good time. Like, it's not – it's after the bye week. It's not – like, beating UCLA was big, but it wasn't, like, a super, super emotional win. And so I think – we got it at the right time, which will help us. Before we get homecoming and we're rolling, my dude, please stop. <laughs> we get homecoming when we're rolling and we're playing these, you know, I don't want to say softer teams, but we're playing Bowling Greens. And you get in your head like, okay, let's go put on a show for the fans. Like, this is going to be a cakewalk. Where's the party after the game? What are we doing? What's, what's the plan? And then you overlook guys. Where I don't think we're having the type of season where we're going to overlook anyone especially a, a big 10 team, you know? Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. All right. So our final two things we'll talk about before we jump into the actual predictions. First one is spicy takes for this week. Do you have any spicy takes? Mm. This is a monster Darius Taylor game. That's going to be my take. This is the homecoming King game. Hey, that is a spicy take. I mean, you're talking about a team that is top 15 in rush defense exactly. and sure calling the shot, so I like it if it happens. I uh, could be hand-in-hand hand with you, actually, on this one. My spicy take is the offensive line shows out in this one. So if the offensive line is showing yep. out, that means DT is probably finding some holes and having a big game. So I think we're locking step, which means it has to happen, right? Uh, automatically. Everything we've always said on this show comes true. One Everything. thing about that. And anything that doesn't happen is deleted from the archives. So you yep. don't have to worry about checking no, on it again. One thing about the internet, it doesn't last forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The final thing I got for you is call one shot. One thing happening in this game, call your shot, anything. It could be something big. It could be something small, something that will happen in this game. Let me get a, it actually ties into who I think is going to have a big game and Elijah Spencer, big touchdown. Okay. Like, you know, maybe like I'm talking 40 plus yards. Like he just, you catch him. Like he's, he beats a guy wide open. Love that. All right. I had myself written down as Christian driver touchdown. So I like that one. I think they use him close to the red zone. So we'll see what happens with that, but we're going to dive into the predictions. You're not going to want to miss this one. That's what's coming up next. First, I got to talk to you about our friends over at FanDuel because you can start big this season. You've got the NBA kicking off. You've got college basketball coming soon. You've got the college football in full swing, NFL, so much more. It's literally the best time of the year when it comes to sports. So it's time to take advantage with America's number one sports book. And you can do all of that in their app, on their screens, on the sports book. When you're in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, the live play by play, and so much more on the same page where you can place bets. And on top of that, if you're getting started with FanDuel, you'll get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So that means if you win or lose that $5 bet, it does not matter. You're getting $200 in bonus bets guaranteed to go and win your money back or just keep on capitalizing and build that bank up. But regardless, FanDuel is a place to be right now. The Gophers are favored by four points against Maryland. I would take that right now. That can preview a little bit on where my prediction is going, but I'm excited by it. But you should visit FanDuel at FanDuel.com. FanDuel, official sportsbook of Locked On. All right, Gophers fans, it's time to break the tie, and Tristan came out with a dub against UCLA, so I got to get back on the board. We got to tie this thing up, but we're diving into the predictions. So the first things first, Gophers score in their first offensive drive, yes or no? That's the first prediction we're going with. Do the Gophers score in their first offensive drive? I'm going to say no on this one, only because you know how I like to say yes to most of things. 
but I think, you know, maybe this first first drive the script doesn't work out. The script doesn't work out just on the first drive, though. I mean, if you're going off the first drive in probably 80% of the games that have happened for the Gophers this year, they have not scored. So it's probably yeah. more of a safer bet for you. But I'm going to go against the grain. Okay. I'm going to go homecoming energy, pulling out the stops. We are getting a score in the first drive. It might not be a touchdown. It might be a field goal, but we're putting some points on the board. All right, next one. <clears throat> Will Ty Felton, Ty Felton, the leading receiver in the Big Ten, leading receiver on the Maryland Terrapins, has 803 yards total, six touchdowns on the season so far. Will Minnesota prevent Ty Felton from scoring a touchdown this week, yes or no? Oh, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. We got we got them boys, especially our secondary right now. They haven't played. They haven't played a secondary like ours yet. I'm with you. I like it, but I'm going opposite of you. I'm going, no, Ty Felton's going to find a way into the end zone. And that doesn't mean that we can't win this game, but we saw USC get a passing touchdown. We saw UCLA get a passing touchdown. So I feel like Maryland being a higher powered passing offense right now is going to find a way into the end zone. And they're probably going to be looking for their number one guy. I think maybe the Gophers slip up in the first half and it becomes a score. But after that, they correct, they adjust and hopefully shut him out for the rest of the game. Like that. All right, which gopher, if any, gets an interception this week? Oh, so I was kind of thinking about that when I was thinking about my defensive player of the week because of how often they throw that ball. And I think I want to go with Kerry Brown. There is a little bit of a risk because Kerry Brown hasn't played in a little bit, but I think it was more concussion stuff, which hopefully means after this uh I was going to say week, he'll be I back. just thought he was just hurt. I figured he'd be back. Yeah, I think he could be back. I think he probably will be back, but I mean, no risk it, no biscuit. That's what we yeah, say here at Rock Island. That's what I'm saying. Right? So I'm going to keep going with the stud. I'm going to yep. keep going with that boy wonder. They've been calling him Koi Wonder. Uh, Koi Parrish, that's my guy. I'm going to it until the bank runs dry, till we go broke, till we go bankrupt. Koi Parrish, bring me home. Love it. All right. Who leads this team in tackles? Maverick Baranowski does. Dang. It's a easy, I was going to say, it's an easy pick. It's an easy pick. The guy just flocks to the ball. I'm going to go with the other guy who is currently leading the team, then Cody Lindenberg. It's got to be one of the two, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Danny Stragow enters a combo every once in a while. Jack Henderson enters a combo every once in a while. I'm going to go with the surefire, hopefully get some points back here with Cody Lindenberg. Now, how many rushing yards do you think Darius Taylor has in this game? Now, I already said huge game, so I got to just follow it up. Give me, let's say like 120. I am not as optimistic as you are. I think they're going to get them involved in the past game, but I'm only going to go with 62 rushing yards this week. 62. Oh. Oh. I know. Boo me. <laughs> Prove me wrong, Darius. <laughs> no, I got you. All right, who we're gonna go two picks back and forth, but who do you think scores the first touchdown for the Gophers? Okay, I got a big one here. I got a good one. Jameson Gears. Take a shot. Take a shot. Let's All I right. want the let's get some tight end involvement. I mean, I said I was gonna call my shot, right? So I'm gonna go with Christian Driver. I said I think he's getting a touchdown nope. this week, and I'm gonna go he gets the first touchdown this week in something spicy. Who's your next pick? Um, well then I gotta go DT. <laughs> just to, just in case the Jameson Gears thing doesn't work out statistically, I probably should go with him. I really want to match it and go Marcus Major just to like really go back to back, but I'm yep. not going to do that. I'm going to go with Daniel Jackson because I think that this passing defense for Maryland is very bad and Daniel Jackson is going to have a day. All right, so your offensive breakout player of the or game, not the player of the game overall, but who breaks out that maybe hasn't so far this year or has maybe had one good game who is a player that you think could break out and have a big game today or Saturday, I guess? I mean, I I went with Jameson. Let me just keep rolling with the tight ends. Give me the other one. Give me Nick Keller. Like right. maybe, I don't know. Maybe. You don't know. You know, it, if, if there's anything based off of watching my brother play, they don't get the ball that often, and then one week they just get the ball a bunch. So that could be this week. Too bad they didn't do it a week <laughs> earlier because they just lost a tight end in their 2025 class who decommitted the today. But, uh, well, you know, I agree with you. They don't throw the balls to their tight ends enough, but then they randomly do, and all of a sudden they pop off. So it's not a terrible call. 
I'm going to go deep in the well here. I don't know if it actually happens, but I would love it if it did. I'm going to say Jordan Newbin. He gets worked in. He gets to go off. He gets to have a big play here or there. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, yeah, JoJo, he's the dude. So I'm going Jordan Newbin. All right, defensive player of the game. Mm. I now you got me nervous that Kerry Brown's not going to play. I was very confident he'd be back because <laughs> I just was I was just feeling it. Um, then I'll take Koi for this one. I'll take Koi for this one. Then I'm going to take another secondary player. I'm going Justin Wally. I think he's ready to ball out. I think he's ready. He's going to be back off the bye week. He came back from his injury versus. Uh, USC and UCLA, he was getting it going. He gets a full week of rest, and now I think he's going to come back with a full vengeance. So I'm going Justin Wally on this one. Now, final score predictions. What do you got? So I kind of have a higher scoring <laughs> game than I like, but I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. I'm just going to stick with it, though. 30 to 24, Gophers. 30 is possible. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is possible. Uh, so we're going to go 30, 24 Gophers on your end. I am going to go 23, 17 Gophers. See, that's kind of, I don't know why I talked myself up to this higher score, but I just, I feel like when I think the, the game is going to be low scoring, then it, it ends up being way higher scoring than I think. And so I kind of in my brain was like, it's going to be a low scoring game. So go with a high scoring game to win the pick. <laughs> Speak it into existence. Yeah, I mean, I why not? You. I got you. All right. So that's going to do it for our predictions. We're going to move on to what are our biggest worries of this game? What gives us confidence and a little bit more coming up next. You're not going to want to miss that here at Locked On Golden Gophers. First, we got to talk to you about a familiar friend to the show, but we haven't talked about him in a little while, and that is Prize Picks because Prize Picks is the daily fantasy spot to be. So right now, you should definitely be headed up and looking at Prize Picks, downloading the app because it is fun on wheels. It's mobile. It's on the go. You can get it going. But right now, you can win up to one hundred times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. In fact. Prize Picks puts its members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. And when your picks hit, you can get your money in as quick as 15 minutes, so you're not waiting. You're not sitting there twiddling your thumbs like, man, I got to wait a week until I get my money. Nah, they got you covered right away. And if you sign up today, you can get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive that $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. And then on top of that... <clears throat> Prize picks is the best way to win real money during the football season. Which players are going to go off? Which ones aren't? You can make your picks in less than 30 or 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long. So I pulled up the Gophers game. I pulled up a couple numbers and I'm going to have you pick four over or unders, Tristan. So we've got Darius Taylor, 86 and a half yards. You're clearly going over on that one saying 120. <laughs> we've got Daniel Jackson with 60 and a half uh, pass receiving yards. What do you got over or under? I'm going over again. All right, we've got uh, Lamecki Brockington with 19 and a half receiving yards. Oh, that's too easy. That's too easy. I I didn't expect to take all those overs, and I hate that, but <laughs> yep. That's over. I'm going under on the Brockington. I'm with you on the over for Dan Jackson. I'm going under on Darius Taylor, but then we've got Roman Hemby, the opposing running back. They've got him at 43 and a half rush yards. What do you got there? Uh, we're going to have to go over on that one. <laughs> on uh, nervously, unfortunately, if it's run D, I feel like 43 is not that much. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say gamble with, that gamble that with your going. brain, not your heart. Yes. Gamble with your brain, not your heart. <laughs> but overall, you should take your shot on prize picks. You can tail us on this one as well. And hopefully we'll bring you in some money. You can download the app today. Use code locked on college to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, that's locked on college for $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup when you download the Prize Picks app. <laughs> All right, Tristan, we're going to wrap this show up. We're going to talk about this game in specific. So I want to know what is your biggest worry heading into Saturday's matchup, homecoming matchup against the Maryland Terrapins? The biggest worry is probably, I, I know I said, I think it's going to be a, a, a huge running game. And I'm not going against that, but my worry is that that won't happen because I really think that it's so crucial to our offense to get that going, to get out into a lead and 
take care of business. And when the run game doesn't happen, then we get stuck in these close games. I'm going to go uh, somewhat similar, <clears throat> kind of, I guess. My biggest worry is that the Gophers start slow. And what I mean by that is the Gophers have been starting slow. We just talked about how they don't typically score in that first offensive drive. But my biggest worry is you had that week off, you've had time off, you get a little lackadaisical, you get a little too over-celebratory with homecoming, you got all the alumni hyped and everything like that. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, you're not scoring on your first offensive drive. You're not scoring on your second offensive drive. You're going too slow. You don't get a score till like the mid-second quarter, and that's where things can get dangerous. So hopefully the Gophers come out in full gear right away, and they can put some points on the board and get the momentum going. But I'm afraid that they're going to start too slow. I can see that. I, I agree with that. Like, I can see all of that happening, and it's, it's worrisome. It feels too real. It feels yeah. too real. <laughs> all right, so what gives you confidence in this game? Um, the, the bye week, I really, really think we caught the bye week and homecoming. Like I already talked about before, but that's what gives me confidence. I, I don't feel like we're coming into it too high and we're not playing a team that's, that's super bad or super great. Like it's, it's a good, a good matchup for us to kind of jump back in and cruise through the second half of the season. Yeah. I, what gives me confidence is the past defense. Uh, they've proven themselves. They've proved themselves against USC, which is still a good passing offense, regardless of if how or how good USC is as a whole. Uh, UCLA's passing offense has been doing good as of late, too, especially with the changes they've been making. And the Gophers have been forcing turnovers. They've been playing really well. So I, I know it's a strength of Maryland, but I think that the Gophers are going to step up. <laughs> <coughs> Whoo! Your boy's still dying. Lose All right, him. who will be the unsung hero in this game? Oh man, unsung hero! I want to. I've done it before, but like you said earlier, the offensive line. I think the offensive line has to has to have a a, a solid game at least, and so I think they will be the ones who kind of set us up for success. Unsung hero. I'm gonna go with Jackson Howard. I saw Jackson Howard got in in the UCLA game, I think, and he made a pretty decent play. Uh, and I think that his snaps are going to start ticking up here in this back half of the season, especially coming off a of bye week. They know the talent in him, but it was just getting him up to speed. Dude went to LSU, transferred back home. Coach Debo loves this dude, loves who he is on and off the field. And I think we're going to start seeing him get worked in more and more on the field. So I think Jackson Howard has some big coming out moments in this game. Yeah, I agree with you. I think we it, he's a name that we haven't really said that much at all this year. And I think that it's it's going to ramp up to the point where next year we're talking like, like that's gonna be a dude. That's a dog. Like, so I I I, I agree with you. All right, and then the final question, the final question we have here is, what will be the biggest coaching question? Or I let me back that up. What will be the biggest reaction coming out of this game when it comes to coaching? Will we be questioning? The offensive play calling, will we be questioning the defense? Will we be questioning a third down, a fourth, not going for it on a fourth? Or will we be praising some decisions? What is your call on this one thing that we will walk away feeling from coaching in this game? I think it's, I mean, it, it, it Gopher fans are very reactionary, as all fans should yeah. be. Like, yeah. if we suffer a bad loss, no one's knocking the, the hey, question the coach, question the coach. I, I won't because that's, what fandom is, but I think it depends on those crucial situations. We always talk about like that third and long and, and PJ draws up a, a, a run, you know, uh, to get a couple of short yards to get an easier kick and, and things like that. That's what we're going to question is where it's going to come down to. Okay. Maybe PJ doesn't need to call the place. Maybe somebody else needs to step in and, and be the true play caller with PJ's veto or something like that. So I think that that will be a, a big thing. If we, if the offense gets nothing going, then it's going to be okay. Who's calling plays here. I feel it. I feel it. I'm going to go the opposite of you. I'm going to say, we're going to be praising PJ this week because I just feel like he's been making a lot different decisions than what we're used to seeing from him. We've yeah. seen him go for it on fourth and win the game and use USC. 
we've seen him punt it when maybe we shouldn't have or wouldn't have with three minutes to go in UCLA. And then all of a sudden he uses his timeouts perfectly, gets the ball back and scores. I feel like lately he has been on fire with some of his decision making. And he, I, I'm I'm saying that he's going to keep that streak going. He's going to have a big moment in this game where all of a sudden people are going to question it in the middle of the game. But when we look back on the end result, we're going to be like, dang, PJ got it right again. Yeah, no, and and I, I agree with you one hundred percent. I actually think his play calling has been, been been much better this year as as opposed to what we've seen before. I think he's doing a great job this year. Actually, I I was more saying along the lines of if we lose, right, right, no, I got things you. will be negative. But if we win, I definitely agree with you. Like like people will be like, wow, this is this looks different. If it looks different, we will let him know it looks different, or let let the people know. the people let you know, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm with you. Well, that's going to do it for us on today's show. Next week, we will be talking Illinois. Hopefully, we're talking about a Maryland win. And Tristan will be back in on the boat for Illinois. So until next time. Oh, and by the way, we're going to have some big news next week. We're going to have big news for you. Look forward to that. It'll be exciting. But you're going to have to tap in to find out. That's going to do it for us here at Locked On Golden Gophers. We'll see you next week. Until then, roll the boat, Sky Yamaga Gophers, as always. And don't forget to hit subscribe.